First off, you know, as everyone here up and say, and I truly mean this, I want to thank God, man. I think we all should, because we all here today. We all got a chance to wake up. Um, just thank God for giving me the opportunity to be up, be here. I want to thank my beautiful wife, my sons, just my family. Looking at her, she might make me cry, so I ain't looking at her. <laughs> but uh, as I go through this, guys, I'm going to be a little different than everybody else was, because I'm going to kind of speak from my heart. Try to put a little speech together, but that thing usually never works for me. You know, I always speak from my heart and it just comes out real. But I do want to thank the Chancellor, Sir, I really appreciate the conversation you had with me. It means a lot. Our AD, John Wild Hat, I don't think there's any second to none. Just the way it's barely worked through the process. The uh, committee, the way you guys have talked to me in there, just made me feel comfortable, made me feel that this was home. It wasn't just me trying to sort the job, they were trying to sort the right coach. They asked all the right questions, and they were picking my brain apart and constantly going. So what you guys done in there, I really appreciate that. They're never going for that. Uh, Herm, just being from where I'm from, uh, from Camden, New Jersey, Herm's from Philly. I'm just knowing someone that was right there, being that close and being able to do that, and him telling me how he felt this was home, and understanding knowing what it's like going up to Germantown and North Philly and being in those spots, and me being in Camden, I said, wow, if he can make the home, then I know I can come make the home. So um, I appreciate the athletic department, just all you guys that stood behind me. Thanks a lot, guys. Now I'm getting to just the coaches, because I always want to go back, play low league football, all my low league coaches, man. I appreciate all y'all. There's too many of you guys. I kept changing every year. I can't remember every day, but Coach Drippin, my guy. So I want to thank him, my high school football coach, Marquise, Todd McNair, all those guys that were there. Uh, Western Carolina, Kent Briggs, Jeff Collins, Matt Rule. Just about some guys coming to recruit me, did a lot. Uh, Kevin Coyle. Who was the secondary coach at the Bengals when I had a little short stay? Even though he cut me, he kept calling me. He said it was something about you, friend. I just gotta keep talking to you. When I always talk to you, we kept in touch a lot. And I was on hope, swearing I was gonna get the practice call because he kept hitting me up. But he messed up my uh, Hall of Fame career. I was supposed to be a Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my guy. Hopefully, I get you guys get to see him soon. Um, and I was just getting to this, man. Just me having the opportunity of being here, guys. I'm gonna bust my butt. I'm gonna bust my butt there, and I promise you that. I was taught that, and I wanna go back to a story of why I'm gonna bust my butt. As the chancellor was talking to me, this is several who said, friend, I know you can recruit. I know you can do all this stuff, that's great. But what about the diamonds in the rough? He said, what about those guys that people overlook? What are you gonna do with them? And I sat back and I said, how am I gonna forget about me? Like, I can't forget about me. My mother had me at 13 years old, turned 14. By the age of 21, she had four boys. So you're talking about hard. I was the dirty kid that they tried to crack jokes on. I was the guy that went to school and didn't have all the stuff everybody else had. But what I knew that I wasn't going to do because I had an uncle named Charles Brown. He told me, don't ever, ever, ever allow these situations to dictate your outcome. You make the best of them. You dominate. You get up and you walk every single day with your next foot forward. And I bust my butt. A lot of tears. I got a lot of pain inside me, guys. This isn't just for me. This is for the community that when I rode through here with Tori, as we got together, we went through the community. And I said, oh, I see why when the coaches I asked when we come here, he said, I'm not sure about the neighborhood. I said, this is the neighborhood I need to be in. This is the neighborhood that I can make a change. This is the neighborhood that these guys are going to be behind the program, and the program will be behind the community. So one thing I can promise you and assure you, that where I'm from, it looks just like this. I understand and I know what it's like to be from the situation. So we're going to do everything we can. And if you're involved with Syracuse, we're going to make this community the best community in the world. So that's one thing that I'm allowing myself to when it comes to community service and being able to do that. I talked to you about why Syracuse. Because everybody asked that, you want to know why Syracuse. The well, reason why is because when I was in the ninth grade, we just got to high school. They got all the kids from the city of Camden on the Little League. We all got on the bus and we drove to Rutherford Stadium. And Donovan Darius was playing. So we all got a chance to go see uh, Syracuse play against Wisconsin. Now, Ron Day was on the win Heisman. Well, his butt got shut down, that day. <laughs> <laughs> we was all happy to see Donovan, a chance to meet Donovan McNabb, got to meet all these great coaches. So as you know, kids continue to hear me, that's my ambition of Syracuse. That's what I saw, that's what I want. So I'm going to continuously talk about the Pascalone, Pascalone and Delion era. Because like, I got a chance to work with Delion, and I've seen how we work, and I try to mimic it. And I could never be as good as a coach as Delion was. Like, he forgot more football than I know. 
So I'll never be on that level of it, but what I do, and I'm gonna promise him, because my wife still talks to Ms. Barr, we're gonna bust our butt to get this thing back that way. That's what I'm looking for, guys. This isn't about me, this isn't about all that. This is about bringing the tradition of the great football that was here before me, and before I got here, I gotta go back to that era. I made the call to Pastor Mahoney, I said, Coach, how would you feel if I became the uh, head coach at Syracuse? He said, well, I haven't been there in 20 years. I mean, I don't really have to say in that. I talked to John, he's a good guy. I just went back with the white freenies, uh, all the fame thing. But just the fact that you call him, that's commendable. I appreciate that. And I said, well, would you be okay with it? He said, if they pick you, you got my blessing. I won't fall to that the job at that guy. And listen, when you look at that list, when you see Frank Brown on that list, you just see a couple players say, I went full tilt to make sure I had the job because I knew that if you didn't hire me now, I would have to wait. You know, my opportunity wouldn't be there. And he said, if there's an opportunity in place, I'm gonna take it. I took full advantage of it. I reached out to Mr. John. He returned my call right away like most people would do. The president, I mean, the AD returned the call. He admitted him, I would say, hey, what's going on? It's Fran Brown. The best way to find out about me, Fran Brown is through myself. Everyone can talk to you and say all these things about you, but I know me. He called me and he said, we got about five, 10 minutes. Brandon got a lot of meetings to go on. 50 minutes later, we were hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> got a chance to talk. He said, I want to meet with you again. Uh, we call me on Thanksgiving. What do you think about tomorrow sometime? I said, what about tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving night, we talk. We just wanted to be on there in half an hour. Hour and a half, we hung up. You know, and it was just the right vision. Like everything that he wants for the, for the athletes here is the same thing I think about on a daily basis. See, like, I was always able to go out and recruit and get the best players and get them, but it wasn't because I was saying all this stuff or I was selling all this stuff at Temple. It was because of the relationships. It was me continuously talking to them, talking to them about life, helping young men become closer to the man above. Like, I was told ever since I was a little kid, the reason I'm here now is because my grandmother, before she passed, I would always hear, Jesus lives in your heart. Jesus lives in your heart. And I live that, and I know that, and I believe that. So that's how I recruit. Recruit just being genuine, I'm telling the kids the truth. I got them to come to school because they wanted to be close to Christ, or Allah, or whatever it is you may believe in. They want to get a degree, and they don't just want to get a degree, they want to be educated. You know, come to school and get educated. I'm telling all the kids now, the reason you should come to Syracuse is because just because you come here, you're going to be successful for the rest of your life. Like, I just held up a jersey with Tim Brown's number on it. I'm from Camden, New Jersey, God. Those things don't usually happen unless you're willing to go push. And the same way I'm talking to you is the same way I recruit. It's the same way I'm going here every day. Same way I'm in practice. I'm going to be an animal in practice. I told the guys yesterday, nobody here has more energy than me. I never stop. I'm up all night. I'm going to work my butt off. And I can promise you and assure you that what we're going to do here is going to be big things. It's going to be big. But I'm going to need everybody to be involved with us to make sure you constantly support this show. Don't tell me you're a fan of me. You're not really helping to be a fan. Don't say you want a championship because you give a six to six effort. You know, we got to make sure that we're putting out what we're supposed to put out. So like nowadays we're involved in it when it comes and I hit all. All the different things that there is. And guys, if you play here and you're alumni, I don't need your money. I need your presence. I need those guys to see the history that was before them. I need them to want to be able to mimic what happened before them. The money and all those things will come when the time is right. I want you guys present. I want your heart because you're going to get my heart. You're going to get every bit of me that you can get the entire time I'm here. Now listen, guys, like I told you earlier, I'm from Camden. So every coach get up here and say, this is home. I'm never going nowhere. And then three years later, he's trying to get a new job or a new contract. Guys, I come from welfare, baby. I'm good. I don't got to have that family first car no more. I'm here for life. I promise you that. I got that little girl. Until she turns about 12, 13 years old, she too. That's when I'm going to step away and take care of my daughter. But you got my word. My name is all I got. I've been taught that my whole life. I will be here. I will bust my butt to be the coach. I watched other teams in the ACC a few years ago win national championships here. So it's going to happen here. We just got to all be on the same page. We got to all push. If you coming around, 